When Lorena talks about her marriage with John, it's a nightmare from beginning to end. It's actually very hard to imagine how they lasted four years together. He hurt me and, uh, and my lip was, was bleeding and um, I had bruises. John maintains that he never hit her, but he admits that he might have kind of pushed her a little or that when he was restraining her, he might have been rough. If we get in a fight and you jump on me and start hitting me and I try to subdue you, you're, you're going to end up getting some type of injury, like a bruise or fat lip. What's your definition of spousal abuse? Well, it could be anything. It could be punching a hole in the wall, you know, verbal abuse, you know, calling somebody a slut or a whore or a tramp. Did you do any of those things? Um, in moments of anger, did you push her, shove her? Yeah, we fought. But that's not spousal abuse? I think that's fighting with each other. You know, but you said you were strong. You just, said you were abnormally strong. Well, of course I wouldn't hit her, because I would hurt her real bad. I, I tried to restrain. Did it you leave know. marks when you restrained her? Of course. I mean, I may have marks on me, but I didn't flaunt him. I'm sure there was more problems screaming, yelling, you know, uh, arguments. You know, that's just the way that, you know, Lorena was. I seen her stab him with a fork in the hand. He said that she came after him with a pair of scissors. If that happened then, I'm sure it happened before. The two call 911 on each other quite frequently. You know, um, he calls it on her, she calls it on him. He said that the police would not listen to me because um, we're married. We'd responded to complaints of domestic violence at their residence about half a dozen times in the past few years. Only in one instance were charges brought. We arrested John and charged him with assault and battery, and he got a cross warrant against Lorena and had her charged with assault and battery. One of their charges was null prost, and the other one dismissed. Actually, there was very little difference in what they said when you analyze it. They had a history of abusive conduct between each other. But Lorena gets into trouble kind of apart from John. There were a couple of incidents that were uh, very important to John and, and placed a great deal of stress. Um, not just the altercations about fighting, but what they were fighting about. He found that she went and shoplifted. She stole a couple of dresses from Nordstrom. She was caught. She had to do community service. The more egregious offense was while working with Jana, she embezzled over $7,000. And John was furious about that. Lorena will say that she did these things because money was such an issue and John wasn't pulling his weight. Jana, uh, her boss at the nail salon, figured out that money was missing and made her pay it back with interest, with a pretty high interest, as I remember. So uh, I guess they worked it out between the two of them, but it's not as though Lorena had nothing but, you know, this unblemished past. She abused Janet Basuti by stealing all that money. She didn't need to do that, especially as somebody we, we were, like, brought her in, gave her a job, fed her. And she, we were close friends of her. In the course of your marriage, did you become pregnant by John? Yes, I did. I was very excited because, um, I mean, I wanted to have a child. What did he say? Do you remember? He said that I, I would not be able to, to raise a child for some reason. I said, I think I will be a wonderful mother. We weren't ready anyways, so I, I suggested, that, yeah, well, we should wait. She wasn't happy about it, but, you know, what can you do? He will say that I have to do something about it. And I said, what do you mean? And he suggested some um, the people to have a abortion some in clinics and things like that. And I was just so sad. And I just couldn't believe what he was saying. Did you have the abortion for him? Yes. You felt you would lose him without it? I don't want to have a child without a father. What in the world? She's married. Why would she want an abortion? 
Catholic girl? Good girl? She never recovered from the trauma of an abortion that she wasn't completely on board for. And she carried the terrible trauma for her, the guilt from her culture, from who she was as a person, of having an abortion right up into the moment that she picked up that knife. How often did you say no to his sexual advances? Did he physically and sexually abuse you? It was frequently. It was um, every time he would hit me, he would just try to force me into the sex again. Did you equate this with rape, as you knew the word? Yes, in many occasions I said, I think you are raping me. This is not what you're supposed to do to me. The idea of marital rape just didn't connect. I mean, you said I do. Doesn't that mean you're gonna? In the days just before the attack, the cutting, she was falling apart in ways that she was sharing. She went to a neighbor. Just before this happened, I had talked to her and she, she had said that, you know, what was happening to her, it was raping her, and, and after she said rape, I had some literature on that, domestic violence too. I gave her two articles of that. She was beginning at work to have problems. I mean, she's been doing nails for years. She does a beautiful job. About a couple weeks before this happened, I was getting complaints. I never had complaints before. She was shaking. I would wake up shaking and scared, and, and I would have nightmares. So I went to the doctors. They advised me to get a protective order. I went to, um, to get a protective order because um, I, was, I was scared and I didn't want to be hurt by him again. The tensions are building and building and building in this marriage. I said, what you did to me was, was not fair. You hurt me. She was having a major depressive episode. She was having a breakdown. It had just gotten to be too much for her. He pushed me away and he said, leave me alone. I don't want to hear anything, just leave me alone. This was a woman at the edge. And she goes to the kitchen for that glass of water. And there, she spots that knife. 